Um, so all of you guys did your homework. So now you know exact. You can uh, you know what you listen to, and um, you're familiar with the lesson. So that will help us um, in communicating with each other about it. So remember the um, first listening about design. Could somebody um, who would like to tell about that lecture, um, just kind of a summary of what that woman talked about. She was a designer and it was a lecture for a class. I'm gonna let you guys do some talking so that you have practice. That's what this class is for. Um, who would like to tell us about the lecture? Is anybody ready to talk about that? What page is it? No volunteers. Um, well, we're looking at page 106 and 107. Oh, you can't see the share. Oh, sorry. Let me, let me share. Sorry. <laughs> I remembered I got to share this with you new. Here we go. 106, 107. Here it is. Do you see it? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Just tell me if, it, if you can't see something on the screen because... Talking about the principles of the design. Say that again. Sahar? Mm -hmm. What did you say, Sahar? The woman was talking about the principles oh. of the design. Yes, principles yeah. of design. And what were some of them that are important to her? Yeah, uh, good design should be environmentally friendly, I think. Yeah. And uh, should have a function. Right, yep. Function is 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 function more important than a than the visual appeal than the look? Yeah, yeah, it's more important. More important because what happened? Can somebody tell us what happened with uh, the prototype that she made for her design class? Yeah, she made a chair. Oh. Yeah, um, that looks very nice. But uh, when she sit on it, she uh, broke it. Yeah. <laughs> So that the was, function was not good, but it was exactly. looking nice. Exactly. So if something, and according to her and most people, if something looks nice, but it doesn't work, if it's not functional, then it's not very valuable, mm -hmm. right? Um, we probably all know things that we have, maybe you ordered on the internet, something that looks nice, but it didn't work, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, you know, it's a beautiful window, but it lets in a lot of cold air, for example. I'm thinking about your windows, Ariane, at your house in France. Those beautiful windows that you showed us from your old house. <laughs> Were yeah. they functional as well as appealing? The windows? Yeah, the windows from your house in France. Oh, yes, the big one. Yeah. Were they functional as well as appealing? Yes, they were because um, we can see the sea mm -hmm. and the, the sun can go through the windows and so hit the house. Oh, wow. Yeah. They didn't, did they let in a lot of cold air or no, not so much? No. Okay. Not so much. That's good. <laughs> because it was not so cold over there. Mm -hmm. Right. That helps. Good. Um, what else did she talk about? Um, does anybody want to add anything? I'm trying to remember what other things. Um, Nathir, was there anything else that you remember from the lecture? She thought that she, okay. she was inspired by oh, yeah. teachers. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Good morning, Mohammed. Good morning. How are you, teacher? Good. Mm -hmm. We're we're talking, so yeah, yeah. you can answer our questions if you if you uh, yeah. Yeah. Get into it. right on. So um, yes, Sahar, you're saying that she was influenced by um, who was she influenced yeah. by? Her teachers and her who else? teachers and. Um, I don't know what's their, his name. The man, <laughs> what was that guy's name? Yes. You, you answered it correctly on the quiz, I think. 
Yeah. Dieter, Dieter Rams. Yeah. <laughs> He's from Germany, so he has a strange name that we're not familiar with. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Who is that, Leslie? Good morning. Uh, I'm Nidal. Nidal, Dani. Russia. Good morning. And Good morning. Somebody else is coming on. Where's that you, Diane? You're on here twice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good morning, Nidal. I see you. Nice to see you. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, we're trying to start our class at about 10.05. So next time, if you just um, connect earlier for everybody coming late, then we can be ready to start around. Uh, okay, this is the first time and I had to, uh, this is the first time that I had to fix my computer. Yes, I understand. Um, no, okay. Yeah, so we were talking about this lecture about design. So, okay. um, on page? Uh, on yeah, page? can you see it on the screen here? Can you tell? It's on page 106, 107. Uh, page 106? 106. Okay. Just like what you see on the screen here. Yeah. And you did it for homework. And okay, so by the way... Um, this is on listening? Yeah. And the listening book. We're just going to review oh, okay. the listening today. Um, for those of you that came late, we're um, reviewing the listening A and B, and I'm going to give you time to talk to each other in smaller groups and practice the vocabulary and practice the ideas. And we'll do, we, we have a few things to do that I've planned. So, um, uh, one thing I want to do is this exercise here about inferences. Can everybody see this on page 107? Um, I want to uh, make mm -hmm. it bigger. Yeah. So, um, does anybody know what that means, inferences? When you infer something, that's a yes. inference? Like when you guess something? When you guess, yes, thank you, Leslie. When you guess something. So here's the answer here. Speak uh -huh. Speakers will usually say what they mean directly. In some cases, though, a speaker may imply something mm -hmm. by saying it in an indirect way. Mm -hmm. To infer a speaker's meaning, mm -hmm. ask yourself, why is he saying this? Or what point is she trying to make as you listen? In conversation, a speaker may imply something by saying the opposite of what he or she actually means. A speaker will often do this in order to be funny. The weather was great, three whole days of rain. So is it really great? No. no. They're, <laughs> they're using um, exaggeration or sarcasm okay. to, um, to say the opposite. Maybe, maybe you do this in Arabic, I don't know, or Spanish. Do people use this kind of exaggeration? Yeah. yeah. They say something yeah, great, it. but it's actually yeah. horrible. Like, wow, yeah. isn't this great? We can stay inside for one month. But no, it's not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's so <laughs> You know, we just say like, yeah, it's great. But we don't mean it's great. We mean it's horrible. Um, so I want to listen to these three excerpts from the lecture just to um, uh, make sure you, you understand what an inference is. And we're going to listen to them right now. Um, the, uh, are you guys ready? Uh, we'll listen to the oh. first one. And then... Um, Lala e, teacher. Sorry? Lala e. Sorry. I can't hear you, Mohammed. Was that you, Mohammed? Yeah, letter E. Letter E. Yes, letter E. Yes. I'm Did you finish it, the letter D? Um, we didn't do that one together. You can just listen to it and do it on your homework. We're not doing everything. We're just going to do some of them, okay? Most of, all of you handed in your homework, and you all did very okay. well on the quiz, by the way. Oh. The quiz, you all got 90 Thank or you. more, so good for you on that. And um, interestingly, it took me two hours to make that quiz, and it took you 20 minutes to take it. 
<laughs> so um, that was interesting, but taking it was easy, right? You just click A, B, yes, no. Um, so we're learning about that. Okay, so let's listen, listen to the images here for the first one. Page 107, exercise E. One. So, Anna, I've got an easy question for you. It's one that we've been discussing over the last few weeks. What is good design? Are you sure that's an easy question? Okay, so what does she mean? Are you sure that's an easy question? Um, it's not an easy. It's just not an easy. It's not right. She mean she mean the opposite. That it's not easy to to answer for a few uh, words. Exactly. We can infer that Anna thinks it's not an easy. Mm -hmm. question. Are you sure that's easy? Are you sure you can do that? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Um, yeah. Uh, that's possible. Mm -hmm. So. That's the inference there. It's not possible, but it's not easy. Exactly. Let's keep listening. Two. I showed the prototype to my professor with pride. I was sure she would say something positive about my design, but she just said, try sitting on it. So I did as she suggested, and well, perhaps you can guess what happened next. My chair broke. As you can probably imagine, that wasn't at all embarrassing. So what can we infer when she says, that wasn't at all embarrassing? That was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. Yes. That was. Can you imagine if you made something for your class, a chair, and you're showing it to your teacher, and then you sit in it and it yeah. breaks? It's not work. <laughs> That's very <laughs> embarrassing, right? So, yeah. uh, so if she says, that wasn't at all embarrassing, she means... So that is embarrassing. We can infer that Anna was very embarrassed. So I just want you to start learning to remember this word infer. Infer means we can guess and it's not direct meaning but an indirect meaning. One more. Three. But she was right. You see, when I asked my friends to sit on my chair, they weren't sure how to do that. One person even turned the chair upside down and tried to sit on it that way. Why? My design was so good that nobody knew how to use it. Okay, so in, when she says, my design was so good, nobody knew how to use it. What can we infer there? Um, Leslie? Maybe what's a bad design? Right. Like, the design is bad. <laughs> yeah. It was so good. It was amazing and creative and innovative, but nobody knew how to use it. So we can infer that Anna thought her design was not very good. Um, mm -hmm. So those are examples of inferences from, from that lecture. We do this all the time. When people are talking, you have to infer what they mean. And when you learn the language, of course, that's more difficult, right? Because you have to understand the words, but then you have to infer what do they actually mean when they're saying this, right? So it's a little bit challenging for you as um, English learners. Does anybody have an example of something that was difficult for you to infer? I don't know if you can think of something. Um, yes. I I have. Yes. The, the environment outside is very good that all people stay at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the environment outside is so good that people stay at home? Yeah. Okay. Right. I was wondering if you hear people say something that you had to infer. Or you can, you can give an example like you did. Thank you. Yes. Um, Anything else that maybe you have heard that you didn't understand or that you, that was difficult to infer? No. I don't know, and think of any examples. Can we use, uh, can, is, is infer is the same than assume? Um, that's a good question. Um, 
It's kind of like assume, yes, but when you infer something, um, usually it's correct. When you make an inference, it's, it's usually correct, but you're right, it may not always be correct, and it could be that you're making an assumption when you infer. Yeah, they're, they're definitely close and related. We use them in kind of different contexts. Um, like on a test, you'll, you'll hear, uh, listen to the speaker, what can you infer from what she said? Um, we wouldn't say, what can you assume from what she said? But it's, it's very close, Ariane. I, I think so. I haven't thought about that before, but I think the words infer and assume both are talking about um, guessing the meaning from uh, in, indirectly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or examples about inferences so far? Who else is on here? It's hard for me to see everybody because they can't all come on the same screen. Okay, Rasha, Roshana, great. All right. Uh, excuse me, Ms. Gana. Mm -hmm. Yes, Nito? Uh, the uh, infer is not uh, all time, it's the opposite because in second sentence, uh, this is the same. Uh, it was very impaired. That I'm fair that it was very impaired. Well, remember she said on the lecture, she said that wasn't at all embarrassing. Mm -hmm. So we can infer that she was embarrassed. Oh. But you're right, though. Inferences are not always opposites. No, they're not always opposites at all. If I, um, you can make an inference if I, uh, I look very tired. <laughs> and I'm, I'm doing this. <laughs> and I look tired, and I'm drinking coffee, maybe you can infer really? that I'm sick, or my eyes are red, and I, <coughs> I'm mm -hmm. coughing. Yeah. You can infer that I'm sick, or I don't feel good, or I didn't get right. enough sleep last night. Right. I'm not telling you that, but you can infer that. Yeah, by you can't guess that. I look, mm -hmm. yeah. So inferences are definitely not always the opposite, just when we're using sarcasm or... Okay. Um, that's just one kind of indirect speech. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I infer a lot of things. When I see you here on my Zoom class, I can infer that you're healthy, that you're interested in learning English, that your computer is working, you have internet at your house. Um, you know, so I infer we do that all the time, right? We're making judgments and inferences based on what we see and what we hear um, and what we experience. So it's a really good word to know because your teachers use it a lot. What does this infer? What can you infer? Um, so you just need to know that it means what can you guess based on the information that you have. Um, okay, so let's go to the next thing I wanted to do was to, um, now that you're all here, is to, oh, you know what? I wanna look at the next page first. I wanna look at the next page. One more thing about inferences. Move you down here. Um, if you look on, um, can I go? If you look on page 109, get it up here, it's right here. It also just tells you more about inferences. When you infer, you notice specific evidence or clues and come to a conclusion. Clues can be facts or ideas that help you understand or recognize something. Don't forget to mute yourself if you're making noise, by the way. Um, so clues can be facts or ideas that help you understand or recognize something. For example, a speaker's tone of voice can be a clue that helps you understand his or her feelings. Or the clothes that people in a photo are wearing can be a clue as to when the photo was taken. Oh, like for example, last week when Ariane was with us, she was wearing her um, tank top with no sleeves, remember? <laughs> so we infer <laughs> that she was not in Michigan because here it was snowing outside 
and there's Ariane. She's outside. <laughs> no sleeves. So we could infer that she was not in Michigan, <laughs> but that maybe she was in Florida by the clothes. <laughs> right? Or um, her home was was it was warm, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, but she was outside because you could see the sun. Mm -hmm. You could see that she was outside, but she she was wearing, you know, the uh. shirt. So um that's just an example of how we can infer based on what people are wearing or what they look like. Noticing clues allows you to make inferences or assumptions based on informed ideas rather than guesswork. So you're, you're guessing, but you're guessing with informed ideas. You have some information and you're taking the information, the tone of voice, what they're saying, the environment, and then you're making an inference based on that. Like I said, we have to do this 24 hours you know, a day when we're awake. We do it all day long. Um, some things that can help you when you're, when you're speaking about inferences, you informally, you might say to your friend, it seems likely that, or it seems like that. It seems like, it seems like Ariane is not in Michigan because she's in the sun. Or this probably means that <clears throat> have to do our classes online for another six weeks. Um, in the formal paper, when you're writing, you might use one of these, or when you're speaking a, a presentation, this suggests that, or this implies that. These are really good words for you to use. Um, even when you were doing your writing for the novel, you, um, you might have said something about your character, um, and you had a quote, right? You had a quote from your novel. And after that, you could write one of these phrases. This suggests that Sam uh, misses his family. Or this implies that, um, what else did you guys read? This implies that Brian um, was feeling very anxious and afraid. Because oftentimes when we have a quote from a movie or a book, it's not direct, but it's indirect. So these are some phrases you may want to go back to um, when you're writing a paper later this semester or next semester. Um, okay, so you're going to practice these with uh, speaking. And if you go back to, let me go back to my two. Um, I want you to guys to speak about a couple things in your small group. I'm going to split you into groups like we did last time. I know not all of you are here, but it was kind of fun. And I want to give you a chance. I'm going to give you about 15 minutes to just talk in a smaller group because I know, well, let me ask you this question. How many of you are speaking English during the week now, now that you're not at school? Ariana, are you speaking English during the week? Yeah? Yes, because I was with uh, American friends. Okay, you're supposed to be social distancing. <laughs> okay, so you were with American friends. Um, Leslie, do you speak mm -hmm. during the week? Because I told my friends. You're calling your friends? Yeah. Okay, good, good. And they we speak in English. Speakers. Good for mm -hmm. you. Aid Hal, do you speak English during the week? Nidhal, are you speaking English during the week? Yeah, yeah. With my husband, he's uh, always uh, encouraged me to speak with him uh, English, not uh, in Arabic. Really? Wow. I'm impressed. Uh, Sahar, do you have people speaking? Yeah. <laughs> no, not a lot. I don't usually see a lot of people. <laughs> Of course, because we're inside. So I think it, it's harder for you now to, to practice your English because you're just with your family. And you know maybe you're calling some people on the phone, but I don't know if you're speaking English in those situations, right? Um, Mohammed, are you speaking yeah, English? I don't have a lot of friends <laughs> English. I understand. Um, Mohammed, are you speaking English during the week or not so much? Usually, teacher, I'm uh, I'm listening more and then speaking English. Yeah. Right. I'm still in the right. home. I am uh, watching the movie a lot and uh, 
right. like this and then listening more in the speaking. Yes, that makes sense, right. Um, and so in Russia and Milan, yes. I don't know if, uh, Russia, are you speaking English at all at home these days? Russia's not, do you hear me, Russia? Oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, hard. a little bit. <laughs> when you're not on the video, it's hard for me to. Uh, the, the sound is going on. I mean, the. Go ahead. That's okay. I didn't have a chance to ask everybody. No problem. So I'm going to give you guys a chance to speak English. What I'm trying to say is, at least during these classes, I'm going to give you time to speak with each other. So at least you have 15 minutes or you know, some time, I know it's not a lot, but you have some time to talk to each other. So um, I want you to answer the questions. If you can have your book open while um, you do the discussion, because I can't keep the screen on here when you go to your groups. So I want you um, to circle F. Um, you'll talk about this question. Let's see here. Okay. Um, Anna Fuentes describes learning from her mistakes. Think about when you learned from a mistake that you or somebody else made. Explain the situation and what you learned. So remember, she learned the mistake um, of uh, uh, making a chair and not testing it, and then she took it to her team and it broke, right? Um, now, that's kind of a small mistake. You can tell about a small mistake or a big mistake. It's up to you. Um, number two, some people say the biggest mistake in life is to be afraid of making mistakes. I really like that quote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like it. Afraid of making mistakes. Because what happens when you're afraid of making mistakes? You're not going to do anything. Anything. Right. So you're going to talk about whether you agree or disagree with this idea and why. So I want you to talk about those two. Now go to the next page. So, so you're going to have some time to talk to each other. The next page, um, I want you to use, um, let me just introduce this to you for a moment, and then um, you'll go back and when we'll do the discussions. I want to show you just one of these, um, one of these grammar points that you can use in speaking is compare. So rather than explaining all of this, because I think know this from grammar class. Um, here's some examples of using comparisons. For me, good design must mean certain criteria, meet criteria principles. The most important of these is the product must serve a useful function. So the comparison is the most important, right? Number two, it has to help people do something better or more easily or less expensively. Mm -hmm. So we have the comparison, do something better, more easily. We to have people do something. Or less expensively. Again, the adverb. To, because more we're, easily. Yeah. Right. Because we're describing how to do something. So if you do yeah. something, you do it with an adverb. Do it better, do it easily, do it expensively. More easily or less expensively. Number three, if I had to name the person who the biggest influence on my design philosophy, it would be Dieter Rams. So here the comparison words are the biggest influence. So the, the, the one that's the, the biggest, right? We use EST -E to mean so the highest, the biggest, the lowest, the um, mm -hmm the best or the worst, right? <laughs> Don't forget to mute yourself if you have to make it in there. So, Nathir, if you're talking... Yeah, well, sorry. Don't forget you can mute yourself. Okay. Number four. Yeah. Sometimes I work with clients who feel form just as important as function. Here the comparison <laughs> just adds. <laughs> make sure if you're talking to put your, you have to put your mute on. I might do that for you next time. <laughs> um, so you feel form is just as important as function. So 
It has the same. It has important. Just as means that they have the same importance. So form is the same. Yeah. It's just as important as function. So in your group, um, I also want you to um, answer these questions B here. The person who's had the biggest influence on my sense of fashion is the most important principle when buying clothes is that an example of a clothing brand that has good design but is less expensive than a designer brand is, this is all about clothing. I usually wear blank more often than other types of shoes. When I buy something, price is not as important as quality. Together. So circle B, okay, everybody do that. Um, F from the previous page, B from page um, 108. And there was one other thing. I think, uh, let's see. Oh, there was C also. You can talk about C, which is over here. Um, let me talk about this for a moment as well. Let's look at this one using descriptive language. I'll review what you need to do in your group. But first, let's look at this. We often use common adjectives when we give an opinion about something. For example, we might say something is great, fantastic, horrible, beautiful. Adjectives like these are acceptable in conversations, but it's better to use more descriptive words to be more persuasive and clear. So good and great, those are easy adjectives. But I want you guys to try other adjectives like creative, a creative design, an innovative design, words that you learned. Um, you can use comparison. This chair is made from better quality materials than the other chairs. Or you can use figurative language. In my view, this chair looks as beautiful and as natural as a, as beautiful and natural as a tree. So you can also, I want you to discuss C, what are your three favorite foods? Which kinds of adjectives do you, activities do you do less often? Indoor ones or outdoor ones? Of all the countries in the world, which one would you like to most visit? Most there? Thinking of all the activities you've ever done, which one would you like to do again? Do you think watching a movie alone is good, is as good as watching one with friends? So these are all practicing um, comparisons and using adjectives. Now, and then one other thing I want you to do in your group. So if you can write circle C, okay, did everybody do that? Circle C. Um, circle B, you're going to do that together. And then on the previous page, you'll start with F, okay? And maybe before you start anything, you can talk about, did all of you guys um, find something in your house that had a design that was interesting? I think, uh, Har, can I use you as an example? You had the clock that was an interesting design. Yeah. Do you have the clock near you right now? <laughs> can you show us the clock? <laughs> we can do this because we're in our houses, right? The har is going to show us the clock. That she oh, wow. It's right on the wall. That's interesting. Can you tell us about it and what do you like about it? Yeah. Um, like uh, it's different than we usually, we usually have in our homes. Mm -hmm. So every letter is alone. Like you can see, you can touch it also. And, yeah. And uh, it's like a stickers and uh, you can hang it on the wall and stick it. Um, I like it so much. It's um, it's my best thing in the house. <laughs> favorite thing. Favorite thing. Yeah, it's my favorite. Right. Um, very, very. I don't know. I like it because it's different than usual. It's different design. Yes. So, what's a word that we just learned that means different or creative? 
What's that one of those words that we just learned? Do you remember the vocabulary? Innovative? Yeah, it's innovative. I think so. Because normally we don't see a clock that's like part of the wall, right? That's yeah. very unusual. So, yes. Thank you, Sahar. I'm going to show you guys one thing I have, if you can see yeah. this. I'm going to show you something in my house. Can you see? Uh, I don't know if we can see this. I'm going to make my, my screen bigger. I'm going to stop here. Just a moment. Okay. Can you see better if I do it like this? So I have a table. I don't know. That's not it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Can you see the table? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this is a special table for me. I know that doesn't it looks kind of strange in this picture, but also the rug underneath it. Um, the table is special to me because my son designed and built this table. He designed it and built it. He built it from oh. some wood that was left over from a bookshelf in our church that had been taken down. So he used recycled wood and then he made the, the legs and the table and he made a really nice design. It's simple and I like the angles of it and it's really stable. It's very functional. It's strong and mm -hmm. it looks good and it has a nice color to it you see and oh there's my cat <laughs> and um it's very stable and traditional and simple design i like it a lot and then this chair over here you see this chair this chair has a cool design because i don't know if i can do this here wait <laughs> Now you can see. Okay, so the chair, this was given to me by a friend actually. It's kind of old and traditional looking and it's a nice rocking chair. It's very, um, yeah. like, very functional and comfortable for me because I'm a short person. It's good for short people and I like the rock. <laughs> and <laughs> when I sit in it, I can sit and I have my legs right here. So it's nice. But the cool thing about this chair is that you can fold it up. It just goes like this. Oh. So you can fold it cool. and put it next to the yeah. window and you want to store it. So um, actually the cool, the other thing I like about this chair is that a former student of mine gave it to me. She's from Turkey. And when she was moving to Turkey, um, she gave me this because I was at her house and I was like, oh, this chair is so cool. I love this chair. And she said, okay, well, when we move back to Turkey, you can have it because we can't take it with us. So it has sentimental meaning as well as it's very functional and I like it in my house. So if you guys in your groups, can you, um, if you can find something, you know, that, that you talked about in your homework or just find something that's next to you and explain why you like the design of it with using those adjectives. Um, so you could do that first and then you'll do, what did I say? F, I can't remember the letter, what you circled. F, B, C. F on page 107 and then B on page 108 and B on page 109. So that will take you some time, maybe 15 minutes, um, and let everybody talk and I'm going to visit your, your groups. Sometimes I'll visit, her, but you don't have to. Um, I'm not going to talk unless you have a question. Um, so we have how many people here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people. So we can have about five people in a group, five in one, six in the other. And do I have a volunteer for a leader? Well, I'm going to make the groups will be random, and then I'm going to ask somebody to be a leader in each group. So the leader can ask the questions, okay? So they kind of keep everybody on track. So you can practice being a group leader and it will be good practice for you. Okay, so I'm gonna make these group. I'm gonna go, how many people do you want in your group? Do you, would you like to have a group with five people or would you like to have a group with three people? Maybe three is better. 
I think three is better because that way you'll have more chance to talk. So I'm going to divide you into three groups. That means you'll probably have about three or four people in each group. Okay. Um, so when you get the, the, on the screen, it's going to ask you to join a breakout group. Just click join and you'll go into a separate room. And then after 15 minutes, we'll put everybody back in the same room. But I'm going to visit you. I'll visit each group okay. and um, you'll see how it works. I think it worked well, right? Sahar, do you like it last week? And Leslie? That worked Yeah, well. yeah, it's good. Yeah. I think you had fun with that. So um, I'll create the rooms. And I'm going to open the rooms. And now you can, you can join a room. Do you have an invitation? Very good. So make sure you join a room. Ariane, I think you need to join. And Nidhal, you need to join. Can you click join? Yeah. OK. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. So um, Nathir, could you be the leader of this group? Or do you have to go soon? Yes, I will go like at so somebody else will be better. Okay. Um, who would like to lead this group? Ariane, can you lead the group? You're a good leader. Ariane, do you know what, what you're doing? Can you lead this group? You're muted. You have to take off the mute. So everybody, everybody can unmute. Yeah. When I get an invitation, so I click on it. Say it again. I get an invitation, so I, I click on it. Okay, good. Can you can you be the leader of this group where you're asking the questions and helping people? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And Malak, you'll need to unmute yourself so that you can the people can hear you. Malak, are you there? Yes, I hear you. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, yes. You can keep it I'm listening. together. Awesome. Okay, have fun, you guys. I'm going to another group. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, if I can find how to do that. Go ahead and you can start, Ariane, with the design. The question is for me. The question number two, it's more uh, interesting for me than number one. Some mm. people say when the bigger mistake in life is to be afraid of making mistakes. For mm -hmm. me, it's my thing. Uh, if you take it a big mistake, it's, uh, if you do it, the, the, simple, the lower mistake, it can be easier for you. <laughs> okay. Um. Sorry to interrupt you. I'm not sure why there's only two people in this room. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> Rushana left? Yeah. It, oh, okay. Do you want me to put you I in? I think she couldn't hear us or, or no, something. She can't hear us. Hmm. Yeah. Would you like to be in a group that has more people? Should I join or do you want to talk to each other? It's okay. We can go to our group, we can talk. <laughs> All right, I'll see if I can join you to another group, just a second, okay? Because if you only have two, it's not as Okay. Just a minute, let me see if I can do this. This is...